Hey guys, Alan here, AMH Knives. Today we're going to talk about how to set up your revolutions per inch using a gauge block and your probe. And uh, I'll dive into the software, how to set it up using probing features and uh, get your number to really dial in your mill. So let's go. All right, guys. So basically, for a setup, you're going to go into setup. And you're going to go in to config, machine, motor. And that's going to show you your X, Y, and Z, your revs per inch, and your steps per rev based on what you have. Now, I have a um, running the 6400-bit pulse encoders on a clear pass servos. So I got a <laughs> pretty good amount of steps per revolution here. Um, now that doesn't equate the same as Mach 3. Like when you used Mach 3, you know, you'd, you'd have it where you move the machine an inch and then it would tell you this is how many steps and it would automatically calculate. That does not calculate directly over to this. Um, I tried it. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, big deal being, I would say, is that the controller itself is such a smoother pulses that it puts out to the servos that regardless of what you set up on Mach 3, I wouldn't even use it. Don't even try it. Come in here, set it up the correct way, and then you'll be set on this machine. You won't have to worry, did I set it up right? Were these the old way that I did it? Is that correct? Any of that shit. That'll be done. Um, so usually you'll start out like I have a 16 millimeter round ball screws. They're Chinese. Um, and they're 5 millimeter pitch. So your 5 millimeter pitch screws will give you uh, 5, a good starting position would be 5 revs per inch. So you put your 5.0 in, you probably do that in the wizard when you start the software, um, and then you'll start from there. So you'll go in, make sure that it actually says that on here, that you're not starting at 0 or something crazy and you'll end up you know, hurting your machine of any kind. Um, and then what you'll do is once you've got that in place, you set your gauge block on the vise, set your probe to the gauge block, and what you're going to do is you're going to go into part, probe, and you're going to do single axis, and you're going to orient it the way that you want, whichever way you're going to probe first. Which I'm going to probe to the left of the part. You're going to touch off first, so hit the cycle start, let the machine probe, you're going to let it touch off, and it's going to know where you are in relation, and you'll go back, and you'll make sure that you find that you've approached from the right, which I have. You'll set F10. That'll zero your part where you're at right now. Uh, then you're going to go, and you're going to jog your probe over to the other side of the block, and you're going to measure again, um, and that will give you um, your reading in your DRO of the actual movement that the machine made versus the actual size of the gauge block and that's going to give you a, um, a number there so what you would do say my gauge blocks four inches so I touch off I move over I probe again it's four four and a quarter is what it actually moved to so you take your four and a quarter you divide it by your four inch and then you times it by your um, turns per inch that you already have set which was five and that will output your new number for your uh, revolutions per inch you and then you will put that in the machine and that'll set it up so I'll go through I'll show you on the software here how to do it and then I'll also pop over and show the machine how it probes, how I have the gauge block set up, and uh, getting it dialed in the correct way. So once you've got it set up, now you're going to need to move your Z up. So then you can walk across your gauge block to the other side of it, because you're going to have to probe the other side. So I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm walking across. I'm across. I'm going to drop my probe back down to the other side of the gauge block. I'm going to go in and probe 
single axis and now I'm going to change the side that it probes on because now I'm on the other side of the gauge block and I'm going to touch off and let the machine automatically probe and that's going to tell me that I'm off by point or four thousandths off so I go back in and I take that 4.0466, divide it by 4, times it by my uh, revolutions per inch that I already have, and gives me a new number. I input that in the machine, and then do the same process again, making sure that it actually will read at 4 inches. You may have to do it a couple times to really dial it in perfectly, and then once you're set up you're ready to go um, so I'll show you a video of that one thing I want to also mention that I did forget is uh, if you do have the um, extra probing features you can also do a web um, which you set your width and you set your clearance and you'll automatically probe both sides so you don't have to you know skirt around and move the Z up and down. It's a, a lazier man's way of doing it. But um, and then that'll give you your exact dimension as well. See, so you see, is my my X length? I'm off by uh, one ten thousandth of an inch, or one. I'm actually off by a thou. Uh, losing it today. But uh, so uh, that's just another way of doing it. If you do have those probing features, uh, depending on what. Alright, guys. So that's just probing. another little video on how to. Set up your machine using the Centroid Acorn board and control setup. Uh, hopefully it makes it a little bit easier so you're not uh, searching around for how to do it. They do have incredibly good uh, paperwork on the Centroid website on how to set these up, um, how, to, how to adjust, change, all that stuff for your probe, doing your steps, um, your rotations per inch, all of that. Um, so definitely go on their website, check all that out um, and for anything that you need. Um, this is just a little quick recap of how to do it. And once you've done it with the X, move on to your Y, move on to your Z, do the exact same thing uh, with those moment, movements, and uh, you'll be on your way. Uh, so next video, I'm going to show you how to adjust your backlash, which even if your screws say they have zero backlash, they have backlash so uh, next video I'll show you how to take care of that um, using a dial gauge and um, some simple code so till next time I'll catch you later